All right, guys, today we got a Parker wheel motor off of a Bobcat Zero Turn on my desk, and I just wanted to go over a couple of the things. If you're looking to rebuild one of these yourself, because these things are expensive, and they're big and they're heavy, and a lot of people get intimidated by them, but basically they're really simple um, as long as you know what you're doing. So I'm going to show you some of the things that you can fix, and actually you can fix all of it and save yourself a lot of money, but I'm going to show you some of the things to look for if you're having a certain problem and so forth. Now, we are not going to be taking the bearing out in this tutorial, so if you're looking for that, that will be in another video coming probably in the next week or so on how to take the, uh, that main bearing out of there. But let's get into it and uh, we'll get started. All right, so here's the Parker wheel motor, all right, and you have a bunch of 9 16th bolts up here. Now, a lot of problems with these. People will experience leaks coming out of the side. These are all plates stacked together here, and they all have seals in them. Well, 90% of them have seals, and I will show you how we, you know, you take that apart and the seals, where they're at, and how to change them and all that. Now, if you are not getting any pressure in your wheel motor, it's typically going to be one or two things, which I am going to show you first. Now, if your wheel is, if you engage your, let's say this is on a zero turn and you engage it to go forward and this locks up, chances are there is a bearing up here that got shattered into pieces and it's jamming up your, uh, your wheel hub here, or there's a shaft that got split and a chunk of it fell down inside and it's locking this up. Now, if you can spin this freely with your hand and it's not building up any pressure, that's usually a clean break in the shaft. And I'll show you what that looks like because this is one that has a clean break in the shaft. Now, if you're getting the leaks, that's going to be the seals. Now, this is very important before taking this apart. All of these pieces are stacked, as you, that you see stacked here, have to go back on a certain way and they have to be in the right order. So what you want to do is get yourself something that you can score a straight line anywhere on this assembly, but from the top to the bottom, I have a little Dremel tool here that I'm going to do my straight line up with. So this way, when we put it back together, we can simply line up those lines and make sure that this all goes back the same way. Very important that you do that. my line there so when I put this back together as long as I can line them all back up we're good now up here you're gonna have these bolts they're all 9 16 you're gonna want to take them out make sure you got something underneath because when you back all these out you are gonna relieve some pressure and fluid fluid will start dripping out of the sides down onto your uh, surface with all of these backed out now you can see they're very long bolts. All right. Um, now you can see that this whole assembly is now loose. All right. Some of these pieces may be stuck together. We may need to get our little uh, little soft hammer and uh, kind of tap it lightly to try to break these apart. So we just kind of go around and tap it all on the sides. And you should be able to see each piece moving individually. All right. And then you can go ahead and pull your bolts out. And if you're having a hard time pulling straight up on it, try just sliding individually each piece. Try sliding it like that, and that will allow it to slide right off. All right, and if you are doing a seal kit, this is where you're going to start examining piece by piece. So if you had a pump that was pouring oil out of it somewhere, um, and that happens because a lot of times the guys will tow something with their machine or push something and just overpressurize the system and it'll blow these seals out so this is where you want to check each piece each seal one at a time also make sure there's no scoring or anything up in here no dirt got into the system and scored all this up but check each piece individually and if you have a seal kit this is where you would get your little pick and pull this seal out like that and you would replace your seal but this seal looks good we're going to move forward and you can see why you had to do this line because these all got to go back the same way. These, this is all designed and engineered a specific way um, to build the pressure and for this pump, to work, this pump to work properly. So let's go ahead and remove the next piece. All right, this one just pulls up. Now it's very important before you start pulling these up and you lose, you know, um, all your direction here, 
that when you take these off, you have the other piece down, you want to flip it and put it all in the same order as, as, as you are taking them off. Remember, we have the line there for a reason, okay? And this one I flipped upside down, so I'm going to take this one off, and I'm going to flip it and put it upside down exactly the same way and line up the line where did our line go there see already lost the line there we go line up our line so this way we're rebuilding this in the correct order and it's a matter of just tilting it back uh, the right direction and when you put it back together all right all right this is our little commutator here there is also a ring in here you can see it's like a clear white ring you want to inspect that if you're having leaks okay and again you want to flip that upside down all right next our next piece you can see has got another seal so again if you're having a leak you want to inspect these seals you can order these seal kits online that seal seems to be okay we're gonna go ahead and pull this one up come on and again flip it upside down in the order we took it off and we're gonna line up line up our lines there all right this is the part where uh when these motors fail a lot of this uh in this area would be the problem now basically i mean this is where your whole shaft assembly goes through and uh your rotor here pretty, pretty much will you can see how it's off center, um, how it's engineered. But this will basically um, go around here. You know what? I could actually spin this as if the shaft was spinning. There we go. See how that goes around there? So that's actually what builds up your pressure, the way that that's designed. That's hard to do it one hand here. But when this comes in here, you're building your pressure. And this is going to be your, your low pressure side here. And the way that that spins but what happens a lot of times is you get dirt and debris or bad hydraulic fluid in here you get a piece of sand or something stuck which prevents this from turning or scores up one of these pistons here um that could be a cause of why your your motor had failed so this is an area that you really want to inspect and you want to make sure that this is actually turning freely like that without being seized up because um, that is the uh, pretty much other than the shaft and the bearings that is the brain that is the operation right there of how your pressure is built we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna try to pull this assembly apart here so you're not actually able to slide this piece off you're gonna have to hold the piece below it and kind of jiggle this to pull straight up on it come on just gotta wiggle it back and forth up oh, there we go all right now these little pistons are gonna fall out don't panic we're gonna set this down right here just remember which side you had facing up and you can see them right here and they're a little tight going back in there the way this is engineered but they will pop back in there all right, but we're going to take all them out anyway and inspect all these just to make sure everything is uh, everything's okay. And we're going to clean it all anyway before we put it back together. So it doesn't matter if they fall out. Flip this over if you're doing seals and you will see your seal on that bottom side there. And just inspect it and ours seems to be okay. Well, I just pulled all them out real quick and gave it a quick inspection and there was nothing that appeared to be wrong. Otherwise, I would have came back and turned the camera on. But I flipped it upside down. There's our line. We're going to lay it right back on top. Line it up with the other ones. All right. We'll just pull up on this one. And this one. Oh, that's our thrust bearing right there. Let me uh, set this down a second. So our thrust bearing. That's very important. That actually holds that... Uh, bearing in down there underneath so and you definitely want to make sure your, your thrust bearing is good too um not sure if this comes with those seal kits or not but you can order these these bearings but we're going back to this one here um 
there's no seal in this one so basically you're just going to inspect this one for damage and scores make sure that uh it's not all dug up again this pump was working so i don't expect to see anything um you can see where your little pistons are sitting on here but they're not dug in those marks are are normal all right and just check both sides make sure that everything is uh looking good and you can go ahead and put it back over here with the rest of them in order thrust bearing you could take that out you could inspect that everything looks good set her back down there now we're down we're up to the shaft and a lot of times when wheel motors fail it is a bad shaft these you can buy also we're at the point now we can just pull this up and you want to inspect all the teeth on there a lot of times these will get damaged and you'll have broken teeth and that would be the cause of your problem um and that's, this is where you would replace your shaft. I'm going to show you one actually over here, another pump of what a shaft, what a shaft break looks like. See that? See how that's shattered? And typically when that happens, you really want to, uh, I mean, you might want to consider getting a new pump. Um, I don't know how much damage is down there into the bearing yet. We're not covering the bearing today. But when these break, you can see all this uh, metal here. A lot of these shavings, I can assure you, fell down into here. And on this pump in particular, uh, you didn't see the, uh, the pieces individually when I took this one apart. But they were all scored up. So when you get something that's that involved, you're better off just scrapping this and getting a whole new pump. Um, or depending on how bad it is. I mean, if you have multiple pumps around like we do. I mean, you could take the pieces that are scored and just, you know, from your stack, you can replace just that, that piece. But if you, if you really, really want to save the money. But typically when this happens, I would just plan on ordering a new pump. But, I mean, you can get these shafts. Like, again, if you want to do a complete rebuild and just try ordering the shaft, if you don't have too much damage inside... I do have another one here. I wanted to show you an example of a uh, of the bearing on how it locks up. Let me show you. Beneath here is your bearing, and I can already tell you by what this is doing. It's going to be the bearing. That's the uh, bearings that fell out inside the motor, and they're grabbing and preventing this from turning sometimes. With that being said, I am going to. I don't have my uh, puller here. Uh, I lent it out, so I'm going to do a separate video on pulling off this hub. You have to be really careful pulling these off because th uh, there's been cases where these things go flying across the shop. You could really hurt yourself. Um, but if this is what you're experiencing, you're going to have to replace that bearing in there, and you're going to need to pull this uh, hub off of here to get to it. Hopefully this gives you a better understanding on what's inside of these wheel motors and the simplicity, actually, in taking them apart as long as you keep them in the right order and changing the seals if you have a seal problem. It's really not that difficult to do. Um, the more difficult stuff comes down, like when you saw with that, when that shaft splits and you have the extra wheel motor and you need to make that decision. Do I want to spend $700 on getting a new one when I have a used one and take the time and just rebuild this thing, swap the bad parts with the good parts and put one together. Uh, but that's it. Hopefully this helped you guys out and if it did even if it didn't if you could please just hit subscribe below and give me a like just for taking the time out to try to educate you and um, I'll see you guys next time.